the video of the Brain Surfer Network viewer. It's a new add-on to NeuroGuide. Uh, one activates this particular tool uh, for the purposes of assessment of uh, different brain regions and different brain networks of patients that uh, may be uh, uh, having various symptoms. Uh, step one, of course, is to record the EEG or uh, import the EEG from a patient's uh, uh, recording uh, and then eliminate artifact using one of the uh, tools inside of NeuroGuide for artifact deletion uh, and uh, then scanning the record to make sure that there is no artifact selected and making sure that the test retest reliability is 0.9 and higher. One then clicks Analysis, Loretta, uh, Brain Surfer Network Viewer, and when you do, this particular display will appear. Uh, this is a rendered brain, uh, and uh, in which there's a number of options to look at power coherence phase uh, from uh, different networks. In this case, uh, we're dealing with an individual who was struck by a bat. He was assaulted in the right parietal region. Uh, he has uh, space, uh, symptoms of spatial neglect. Uh, he does not uh, shave the left side of his face. He does not write on the left side of papers. Uh, and uh, he has paresis on the left side and needs a, a cane and assistance to walk. So let's take a look at the attention network since we know his uh, symptoms are there. And I'm going to therefore click this selection of various networks you can see in this panel. This is all inside of NeuroGuide for other parts of NeuroGuide, particularly for neurofeedback. And this is why uh, we're looking at the same parts of the brain, but now in a different way. This time for assessment. So I'm going to look at a, a, the attention network. You can see the list of Brobman areas that represent the dorsal attention network. Each sphere here is a Brobman area as part of the dorsal attention network. Uh, you can see that the uh, red colored uh, spheres actually represent uh, two standard deviations outside of normal. Here you can set the uh, z-score range that you want to look at. Uh, you can change transparency. You can zoom in and out. Uh, and uh, you can rotate the brain and examine the various parts of the network. Uh, this particular one, if you want to know which Brobman area this is, you move your mouse to the a sphere representing the Brahman area, and then right mouse click, and you can see that's Brahman area 40 right. Uh, here you can right mouse click and see that it's Brahman area 39 right. If you go anywhere on the screen and right mouse click, it will disappear. And you can also look at the projection of these z-scores onto the surface. Uh, we can uh, look at that in a little bit more detail by lowering the z's, and you can see that the surface is deviant from normal on the right. Uh, and uh, normal on the left because the injury was in the right parietal region. So from the surface, as a projection, you can see the, the z-score is a deviation from normal uh, by doing this. You can zoom in and zoom out. You can go back to the nodes and uh, look at just the network itself by making the brain 100% transparent. And then you can uh, move the nodes around. You can also look at the connections between the nodes by clicking coherence. This is the dorsal network uh, look up, uh, up for attention. The red means that uh, there's two standard deviations or greater of uh, elevated connectivity. The blue means of reduced connectivity. Uh, we can bring back the brain to uh, so we can see with reference to the rendered brain with uh, 40 percent uh, and look at the brain in that manner. Uh, I can resize it, rotate, look at the dorsal attention network, uh, zoom in on the dorsal attention network, look at it from underneath, uh, and uh, um, evaluate the different aspects of the attention network as it relates to the patient's symptoms. Now I'm going to zoom in and go all the way in, and we can look at that's Bobbin area 40 right. This is the connections between Bobbin area. Uh, 6 right and problem area 9 right in the frontal lobes of this patient. Now we can look at other uh, networks. We can look at the anxiety network, for example, and uh, uh, we can uh, make that let, uh, more transparent. Increase the transparency if you wish, make them completely transparent, have a little bit of a landmark. Uh, we can look at the ventral attention network. I'm going to make that uh, 
was transparent so you can see the brain. Look at the uh, emotional attention network, the default network. And um, executive function network, face recognition network, the language network in the left hemisphere, he has perfectly good language. Uh, and mirror neuron network, mood network, and a variety of networks, including uh, the, the, the six uh, rich clubs coming from the fusion tensor imaging and the Hagman uh, network. This is the frontal limbic. Oh, I'm sorry, this is from uh, Katani and Bishotten. That's the frontal limbic network, the frontal occipital network. Uh, here's the Hagman Hub 1. That's a hub that represents there's only six hubs in the brain. Out of the 100 billion neurons, they cluster into six hubs. And here are the six Hagman hubs. You can explore them in detail. You can see the Hagman hub 4, which is primarily with auditory language and memory uh, on the right. And we can look at different metrics. We can look at uh, alpha, see how the z-scores change, like alpha 1, alpha 2, beta, different frequencies. We can also look at uh, phase differences, see the z-scores and time differences for the Hagman hub or any of these networks. We can look at phase shift duration at any frequency. You can see it's got fairly normal phase shift duration in the Hagman hub. We can look at phase lock duration, as a, a, a deviant phase lock duration. And we also can look at effective connectivity, which is a measure of information flow. It's a measure of the magnitude and direction of information flow. It's uh, different than functional connectivity and that functional connectivity does not give you direction and, uh, and does not uh, give you the magnitude of information flow. It's a very important metric. I'm going to look at the theta band to look at effective connectivity in the dorsal attention network and we can see that there's significantly deviant uh, flow of information uh, within that network. Uh, and uh, we can examine that at different frequencies. I'm going to now eliminate the homologous so you can see uh, just the left and right hemisphere for the dorsal attention network. And or you can just look at the, the right hemisphere and not the left. So you get great flexibility with the brain surfer network viewer to evaluate different networks in the patient's brain. Uh, to determine uh, the linkage of the patient's symptoms to the, uh, the dysregulation of parts of the brain. Here's the salience network, which is especially important uh, in uh, a variety of psychiatric disorders. Uh, you can look at the magnitude of deviation from normal. You can change the z-scores to see which ones are most deviant. You can change the z-scores up until this network gets completely white, probably uh, three or four standard deviations. Uh, the network will um, be completely normal. It's uh, in some particular range at a particular frequency that the uh, deviations from normal are present. Uh, one can uh, bring in a symptom checklist, look at different broadband areas, look at individual broadband areas, for example, uh, and, uh, uh, and then, of course, look at each of these features at, uh, and metrics at different frequencies. Here's high beta, for example. Uh, for phase differences. Again, the right hemisphere is deviant from normal, so it's deviant from normal in a variety of different metrics, uh, particularly involved with the right parietal lobe uh, and the right occipital and to some extent the right frontal lobe. So this is the um, brain surfer uh, network imager and um, it is available, will be available